Okay, so we have our brackets cut now. Identical. Um, but now we're going to talk about doing the layout process. So, the first thing we're going to do is find the middle of this thing. And you can do a lot of measuring to figure out where the middle is, but what I like to do is just set a combination square close to the middle. So we're thinking that we're close to an inch. And then I'll hold that flush and then use a pencil to make that mark. And then I'll come back from the opposite side. And this is to verify that your center is truly your center. So that'll give you a good idea right, of where your center lies. And it'll give you a good idea of where your offset is. And that allows you to figure out the depth of your cut. We need to do the same thing further up. And the interesting part is, as you're marking these distances, um, defining where you are in this upper region isn't as crucial to be mathematical, right? So if we have, this is our first line here, and this is our second line here. We don't actually care whether or not um, this is a distance. What we actually care about is the constraint that when we're using the drill, right, that can actually come in and reach where we're going. So our minimum height would be here. And so I usually mark that with my thumb, and then I'll scribe that with the pencil, and then I'll just verify it's like a nice number. So the ruler is one inch wide, so if it's less than an inch, which is it, what it is, we'll actually go all the way up to an inch. And that's where we're going to mark our center with our chisel. Right? So we'll come back and we'll have our center marked here and our center marked there. And we're going to continue that with the other four sides. Alright, now that you have everything laid out, you just want to set your chisel blows. Make sure to match your point to the very center of what you're trying to hit. And then just one firm tap. Okay. And again, make sure you're lined up where you want. Midway between the two sides and at the right depth. Then once again, one small tap. Right, so you want to make sure you have the proper alignment with your hole. So um, this is mounted in a cross slide vise. I like it because it allows you to fine tune your adjustment for your hole alignment. So you want to clamp your piece in firmly, make sure it's elevated so that um, you're not drilling straight into your vise jaw. You can always put a piece of support wood if you're worried about that. And then put the machine on. And just a light touch down to make sure you get chip formation. Once you've got chip formation and you're sure your hole is in the right spot, add your lubricant. And then just gently drill through your hole. Uh, this is a pilot hole. We're starting out with the 316th bit. And then we will finish out once all the chisel work is done with our final size because it tends to change the hole size and shape. So again, just using the hand cranks to fine tune our X and Y direction, making sure that we've got chips clearing and we're happy with where that hole location is. So I'm going to add some lubricant and finish out our hole. You know, and then we'll do the rest in time lapse. Okay, so we're going to cut the curved arc out of the eagle bracket.
so just to clarify here, you want to actually right, hot cut this bracket. So we're about halfway through the thickness, and you'll see a cold chill line where um, this seam line will turn black, while the base metal will be glowing sort of reddish orange, and that's when we know that this piece and this piece are ready to just break off over the edge of the anvil. So we're going to throw it in the forge and do it again. So we're at the same part, second key. Really trying to cold chill those chisel marks back and forth so the body heat of the metal can transfer back into where we're trying to cut. Um, the more surface area, the faster it will conduct. The worse of a conductor it is, the easier it is to break it off with a proper fracture pad. So we just work until those edges let go. Right now we're close to a black heat. Not a lot of material holding it together. Close up here. And we're pretty thin. We're almost all the way through. So now what we're going to do is just lay it over the edge of the anvil using the cross peen side of the hammer. Sheared quite nicely. Right. I'm just going to switch my grip so that again we've got this piece unsupported by the anvil while the rest of the material has the anvil to support it, making sure we've got a good grip with our tongs. And it should just break clean off. Okay. So at that point we're ready to go file. Ready to hot file. We've got a half round file. It's going to seat right in here. chamfer and that's just running the hammer right along the edge 
to match that same bevel that the chisel cut. So then we want to rotate it around. So that our chamfer matches both edges in the perimeter. soft radius for the screw or bolt that gets received. These holes will get drilled out one final time to the final size. radius on those interiors with our curved cutout.